All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me all OK. Um, this is Jess Unger here. You might have noticed if you're looking through the chat log that um, I'm logged in today under the name Eric Forshow, who is the account administrator for our webinar platform. So if you see me type in, you'll see me coming in as Eric, but it is Jess here. Um, thank you all so much for taking the time to join us for today's program. This is, of course, the first in this two-part series that we're using to complement the in-person workshop you all completed last month. And today's program is really an opportunity to check in on the progress you've made since you've returned home, to reconnect with your fellow workshop participants, and to address some questions such as, uh, what challenges have you faced? How can we as a community work to address them? And what specific questions might you have that we can work on towards uh, implementing your emergency plan goals? So before we begin today's presentation, I just wanted to share some technical notes. Um, some of you may have used this uh, webinar platform, Adobe Connect, before, but for those of you who haven't, you'll see on your screen several boxes, including the one labeled chat on the left-hand side there. You can use that um, at any point throughout the presentation to ask questions, share information. It has a really great feature where any links that you share will be automatically hyperlinked. Um, so please do feel free to use it for that purpose as well. If you post a question in the chat box, um, just know that you'll receive a response from me, and I'll make sure that the question is discussed verbally. Uh, Rebecca and I both have our microphones connected today, so we'll be leading the discussion um, on that channel. But of course, we will make sure that all things that are addressed in the chat box are uh, included as well. With that, I'm very pleased to reintroduce you all to today's webinar presenter, Rebecca Elder. Rebecca is an experienced cultural heritage preservation consultant who helps clients find practical and achievable solutions to care for their history collections. She collaborates with libraries, museums, archives, municipalities, and families to tailor preservation plans to their resources and timelines. Over the course of her career, she has performed over 100 preservation assessments and taught countless workshops on preservation topics. Uh, we are also fortunate today to be joined by our other in-person workshop presenters, Bob Herskovitz and Syrah Huki. And so they're logged into the chat as well. Syrah and Bob, I don't know if you want to say hello there in the chat window to everyone. Um, they're logged in together. But just a reminder that the structure of today's program is fairly informal and conversational. So we want to make sure that we're hearing from you. Rebecca's going to start off by sharing some slides, and we'll begin the conversation from there. Um, we've had a few folks from the workshop right to say that they were unavailable today, so of course this is being recorded to share after the fact. Uh, likewise, if you can't make it for the next session, keep that in mind. But uh, we do have some notes from a few of those folks to share on their updates and progress too. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Rebecca to share some content. All righty, I think, can you hear me now? I think I'm unmuted. So. I'm great. Yes, yes, great. Um, it is really nice to see you all, and I am thrilled that you managed to make it on a holiday week. Having a very hard time believing it's been a month since we got back from Atoll. That feels a little crazy. Um, so today's plan is we want to do, I just want to talk about where you are in the process, give you all the chance to update your cohort and ask questions about anything that's going on. So today we're going to talk about how you're doing in terms of getting support from your organizations. We're going to talk about putting your emergency teams together. And we're going to talk a little bit about the risk assessment process. So during the workshop, we said that getting organizational support was crucial for having a successful emergency plan. Um, and we also talked a little bit about stakeholders and how they were some of your best allies if your leadership was being a little recalcitrant. So what's happened with you all? Has your leadership been receptive? Have you had conversations with any stakeholders and what have they thought? Um, have you come up with any obstacles that we can help you with? Um, is there anything that you've overcome? Um, that's a whole bunch of questions 
But it looks like Ryan is typing an answer, maybe? Yeah, and while folks are typing, Rebecca, I can just jump in with the notes that Tim Campbell shared in advance of this program. Um, so he wasn't able to join Please. us live, but he did share some um, thoughts on the questions I shared in the email last week. Um, let me just pull this up real quick. Okay, so he says that um, in regards to scheduling appointments with their core emergency planning team, um, they did look at some dates in October and November, but meetings weren't held because of competing events. And it's to be understood, a lot of times in the fall, things get a little crazy um, within institutions. But um, they've set an agenda item at the next safety group team meeting in mid-December and uh, also planning to have a follow-up discussion with their THIPO and cultural department um, for department-specific uh, SOPs in support of the plan in early December. So they're looking at getting some traction going early next month. Um, so just curious how other folks are progressing as well. Yeah, I, I am the first one to tell you that fall is a really challenging time of year to get things done. So Ryan says that you all have met with facilities and are joining the Campus Safety Committee. That's awesome. Um, you're giving them an incentive to update your larger plan so you can fit your plans into the larger document. That sounds like you all have made a really good start. Sounds like you're getting a lot of organizational support there. Yeah, and I see, um, I just pulled up this email that um, Christina shared, so I'll go ahead and just read this out for folks as well. Um, the question of meeting with first responders um, to address their hazard mitigation plan items relating to uh, cultural heritage that are missing. Um, their goal is to offer recommendations um, regarding cultural item care during a disaster. Objective is to create a plan to address different types of cultural materials and to provide a copy museum records and other areas of interest. Um, so that was, I believe, if I'm reading this cor correctly, Christina, you can jump in and say if not, that was a meeting held on the 22nd of October at uh, 10 a.m. Correct. That's wonderful. Great. So that happened fairly quickly after our in-person meeting last month. Fantastic. That's really, yeah, that's really quick. What is a PDM? That is alphabet soup that I don't recognize off the top of my head. Ah, nice. That's exciting. Great. And when you get into that process, let us know if we can support that. Um, and That's huge. $575,000? That's amazing. That's a good note for other folks to take. You know, that might be something to explore. Absolutely. And I want to get back to Mike, who has said that they are working on their policy, which is going to include emer information about emergency planning for the Cultural Heritage Department. So that is fantastic, reaching out and supporting them. Um, anything else anyone wants to say about organizational support, or can we move on? Oh, Rebecca, I'll just jump in. I'm seeing some other um, notes from Tim here that might be relevant for this section. So, um, oh, fantastic! The question of whether or not they've had the opportunity to meet with emergency responders um, to get them involved in the process as well. It looks like they're scheduling a regional meeting for um, the first few months of 2019. Um, they proposed a fall 2018 meeting with neighboring jurisdictions, but is rescheduled due to large-scale regional wildfires and assignment of critical first responder deployments. Um, have informally asked their federal partners to participate, so EIA, FEMA, FEMA Region 9, as well as the EPA. Nice. Alrighty, then 
Let's move on and talk about the emergency team. Um, look at my notes. So this is just, I pulled this list from the slides from the workshop. It's the people we thought about putting on the team. And so I was wondering who you've recruited. And it sounds like some of you have had discussions with first responders. And I'm wondering what the first responders you've talked to have reacted, reacted like. So Christina, are those your first responders that once weren't so sure on addressing cultural rec items or records, but they asked for training? That's fantastic. Means you all can be partners. And I'm wondering if you've thought about how you're going to do that training. Christina has included the business committee records department and local museums nearby. So you have a whole group. That's fantastic. I really like hearing that. You're kind of building your little cohort there. And Ryan says that their facilities folks have regular and direct contact with the first responders. And you're having drills next month. That's, oh, I'm really happy to hear that too. So you can practice everything and solidify those relationships. And Christina is typing, so I'm waiting to see what she has to say. Oh. And you participated in the ShakeOut Earthquake Drill, preparing a go box. How did that go? And Jess, do you have any notes on people, from people on dealing with first responders? Um, just the ones that I, I shared earlier. Nothing. Okay. Um, kind of jumped the gun in, in this slide, but um, That's and okay. I did get some updates from folks um, on the status of their ICS training, which I think is relevant to this. Um, in that, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, as you all complete that um, online course component, I think that's really going to help in bridging these relationships because you'll have the vocabulary and uh, familiarity with the protocols there. Indeed. And Christina says there weren't a lot of participants from the school, but the museum was able to grab back out for back up for Past Perfect. Um, your little museum would be in trouble if there was an earthquake. So I guess that's one risk that you've already assessed. Yeah, I actually can't say enough good things about the Great Shakeout as an exercise. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with it, but for anyone who has even a slight risk of earthquakes, um, it's a really great model for uh, how to build this kind of planning into your calendar. I'm going to share the link. Um, nice. Thank you. 
Yeah, it was developed by um, a woman named Dr. Lucy Jones, who spent a, her career as a seismologist, but um, was really focused on finding ways to make that information publicly accessible and to um, make sure that people felt like they could take the fear of these events and translate it into some kind of preparedness measures. So, Awesome. The same Lucy Jones who wrote the yeah. big one? Mm -hmm. Nice. Alrighty. Yes, and Christina says you can use the information gathered to help with funding to prepare. That's excellent. And it sounds like some risks were assessed there, which is a perfect segue into the next slide. which is on risk assessment. And you know, just some questions I threw together asking about how your risk assessment process is going. Um, have you used the rep tools yet? Have you discovered any big risks? Anything that was surprising? Um, have you found things that you can mitigate before the disaster happens? And I'll say, um, I know that Mike had flagged um, at the conclusion of the workshop as well that, you know, a lot of the things that we talked about in our session in October were related to natural hazards, but um, you pointed out some of the, the man-made risks as well. So I was grateful um, for him raising those issues, and hopefully this group is thinking about some of those risks and um, figuring out how to address them as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yes, Christina says that inventory looks like something that they need to be working on. But that is certainly something that you can mitigate. It just is something that takes time, and it's sometimes hard to make that time to happen. Ryan and Christina say that flooding is the primary risk. And, oh, good, Ryan has on the books a plan to do a formal assessment and walk through with the safety committee early next year. So that is a super, that is a super positive step to be taking. And just to jump in, um, Tim said that they're planning to use the walkthrough checklist to do a scheduled um, walkthrough in um, December of this year, and then... Um, to do use the risk prioritization worksheet in uh, the first few months of 2019 as well. Awesome. I used the worksheets with a class I taught this fall on emergency preparedness just at school, and they were incredibly useful. They're much more detailed than the ones I've been using. Um, Is there anything else that anyone has going on that they want to talk about? It feels like with only five people showing up that maybe this is going to go pretty quickly. So Mike has had some challenges, maybe two or three. What are they? We'd love to hear them. Oh, wow. So theft of a mastodon tusk from a science center. Do you know how that was accomplished. Computer hacking.
So, yes. Mike says they broke in after hours and stole the tusk. Christina says security issues. Yeah, that's the kind of thing it feels to me like you have a security system, hopefully, but sometimes people are going to do what they're going to do. And Mike says there was a water leak at Lusak Library. The entire Alaska collection was damaged. Um, so Mike, I would love it if you could get a message to them to call the National Heritage Responders for advice if they would like to talk with someone. Um, and that, I'm putting the number in the text box, in the chat box. And I see you, Selena. I'm going to get right back to you, okay? So, my mic is typing. That's a good question, Syrah. Yeah, if there's anything that we can advise on. Um, the National Heritage Responders are happy to provide that support. Um, it sounds like I think even if it's... Go ahead. No, I, no, go ahead. I was just going to say it sounds like it was a significant issue if the entire Alaska collection yeah. was damaged, so I can see how that right. would um, loom yeah. large. And, and even if we're you're know, well through the recovery process, I think our team members would be happy to talk about how things went and see if they have any kind of after the fact advice or can offer more suggestions for going forward. And again, I think Mike raises some important um, challenges with the, the security question and the theft of um, some of the mm -hmm. man-made risks and um, you know ways that we can think about perhaps working more closely with our um, police and other um, uh, you know the responders who are, are dealing with that side of things as well to make sure that they're aware of some of our needs, thinking about. Mm -hmm. this, Spaces are also community centers, what we can do to help address some of the, the challenges. Right. Oh, good news. Thank you. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like nothing, it's not, it's all things that have happened like over the last 12 months, but have reverberations going forward. Did you get the tusk back? <coughs> good, good, that makes me happy. And I'm sorry that all of that is going on. And then I think I want to get back to Selena's challenge, which is scheduling issues mixed with limited staff being pulled in many directions, which is I, I don't think you are alone in that problem, Selena. 
and I think I'm hoping other people will jump in with their suggestions but I think one of my biggest ones for that is to break your planning down into like spend an hour at some point breaking your planning down into as many small steps as possible so you can cross off little things one at a time and that seems to get things done much more easily than trying to attack the whole thing at once. I would also say one of the things we're going to talk about next week, or not, not next week, sorry, next month is what templates people are using for disaster plans. Oh good! I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Um, but I would say that your plan, that you, your template that you'll be using would probably be the Council of State Archivist, just one pager, which is something you can hopefully accomplish pretty quickly. <laughs> At least it wasn't my cats being obnoxious. Well, it feels like we've gotten through the material I wanted to uh, get through to today. Oh, I was just going to say, um, um, you know, again, I am very, very grateful to week, you all guys. for being committed and showing up. Um, <laughs> you are now the, officially and the so few and the proud. They will be viewing this recording and then... Um, and they what do you think? Our watching is after the fact. I would encourage you all to, and of course those of you who are here live as well, if you have other thoughts, to um, please make use of that right. online community. We yeah, it's a holiday. And, um, plan to share instructions about that yep. again via email if anyone has issues getting access. It's not the most intuitive thing, but um, it's a space that we all can use to share resources and ask questions. So um, we hope you all will make use of that. Yeah, that would be great. Oops. Yeah. Maybe if you think about it, Christina, would you share information about the shakeout to the forum? Awesome. So, Christina and Mike are both typing while we're waiting. I'm sorry, Mike, that's the National Heritage Responders, which is the American Institute for Conservation's team of volunteer conservators that work on emergency response. And Christina, that's an incredibly useful um, kind of information to collect.
And 60 participants is huge participation. That's wonderful. Excuse me. Fantastic. Sounds like that was an incredibly useful exercise for you. So perhaps sharing it to the forum so everyone else knows that it's a resource that's available would be helpful. Before we do, I just want to pull over. <coughs> hmm, sorry, I have a cough now. Here. Um, and then, Rebecca, I believe we have one more slide here. Correct. I completely was so worried about coughing. Forgot that I could mute myself, but I think I'm past it now. So yeah, our next webinar is December 18th, and we'll talk about choosing your template, writing the plan, and your salvage priorities. So we will look forward to seeing everyone then. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, need anything, um, reach out via the forums, or you can contact by, us by email. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> yes, and thanks to everyone who uh, joined us today. Happy Thanksgiving um, to everyone. Okay. Yes. And um, thanks to Syra and to Bob and to Rebecca for your time today as well. Yes. We'll talk to everyone next month, if not before. <laughs>